Hey everybody, Mr. Judson here. So we have two things to look at for today. One is you know more graphing of polynomials. Um, and the second thing is how does all this fit into problem solving? And so we'll do a little bit of both of that. Uh, so first of all, um, we want to be able to graph this function. We want to think about things like how do you find zeros? Um, or where is this function, uh, what, what's the end behavior going to look like? Um, you know, if I need to plot some additional points to feel comfortable with what I have, um, could I do that? So you guys go ahead and give this a shot. I want you to draw a sketch of what you think this graph would look like. Okay, you go ahead. All right, so first of all, I just, you know, just like when we graphed um, everything back when we were doing parabolas and square roots and absolute values, I want to just collect a little bit of information. So I'm going to start by saying that I've got zeros at, you know, I can look at this. It's already factored for me. So if x equals 0, right, because 0 times a half, that's going to be 0. 0 times this, that'll be 0. Okay, so at x equals 0. And my other 0 would be at x equals 2. And so if I was going to graph this, that to me says I'm crossing the x-axis at 0 and 2. I'm not going to cross the x-axis anywhere else. Okay, it can't happen. Those are the only two numbers that would make this whole thing equal 0. All right? So when I start uh, graphing this, there's my graph. I'll go ahead and put a point right here and right here. Now we also talked about the multiplicity and that that means something to us. Here the multiplicity is 2. That's going to be an, an even number. Okay, that's, that's 0. Happened twice. That means that my graph has to bounce off the x-axis at that point. I'm not sure yet if it's going to open up or down, but I at least know one of those two things is going to happen. Here, this factor would have happened three times. That's an odd multiplicity. Okay. And so that means we're going to go through the x-axis at that point. Okay. Anytime our multiplicity is odd, we're going through the x-axis. If it's even, we're going to bounce on the x-axis. So now I, I want to think to myself, if, if I was to multiply this whole thing out, okay, I, I know that if I cube this, my first term is going to be x cubed. Right? When, when, you write, when you write something out like this, x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2, okay, I, I can't multiply that whole thing in my head. That's, that's too much for me. But I know the first term is going to be x times x times x. x cubed plus some stuff in the middle. And my last term is going to be a negative 2 times a negative 2 times a negative 2. Okay? I just don't know what's in the middle. But I don't really need to know because when I check end behavior, I just need to know the highest exponent. All right? So if I'm going to get x cubed, and then I'm going to multiply it by this, I'm going to get... 1 half x squared times x cubed, that's x to the fifth. That's my dominant term. Okay, that's what's going to control the, the end behavior for this graph. Plus, I don't really know what comes after that. All right? but, but I don't need to know. I know if I take a positive number and raise it to the fifth power, that's going to be positive. Times a half, still a positive number. So this function has to be increasing as we go to the right. If I go out to the left and I take a negative number, and I raise that to the fifth power, okay, anytime you take a negative number and raise it to an odd exponent, that's an odd number of negative signs, it's going to be negative. Times a half, still negative. And so this function is going to be decreasing as we go to the left. At this point, I feel like I know what this graph looks like. My multiplicity at 0 was 2. It's even, so I know I have to bounce. 
I'm going to go down a little bit and turn and come back up. So this graph should look something like that. Now, now again, we're, we're trying to do a sketch here. So not a perfect graph, but that's what it should look like. Okay. Would, would this ever turn and come back down? You know, the answer is no, because there's no more zeros out there. You know, could it do something like this and, you know, turn and then turn again? I suppose that could happen. You know, could it turn here and then turn and go back down? It could. You know, when I multiply this out, I should have four turning points, right? So, so if the graph did something like this, that's one, two, three, four, that's possible. But really, I don't know unless I know some more math. If I knew some calculus, I mean, I know it, but you guys don't, um, then I could figure out if that happens. But, but really, you know, at this point, we don't know. Now, I, I could say, let's just plot an additional point just to kind of get a better feel for how far down does this go. If I plug in a 1, now even though I don't know what all this is, that's okay. I could plug a 1 into this right here. 1 squared is 1 times a half, that's a half. If I put a 1 here, 1 minus 2, that's a negative 1. Cube that, you still have a negative 1. Times a half, that would be a negative 1 half. So this is a case where it really doesn't go down very far at all. So I may want to go back and adjust my, my graph a little bit. Let me fix this. So we had zeros here and here. I got to plot that point right there. And so now I'm thinking that's a pretty good sketch of what that looks like. All right? Let's graph it on the graphing calculator just to, to double check. All right, so we're going to graph this on our graphing calculator. Let me pull up a uh, calculator. I've already got the function typed in. I, I did 0 0.5 instead of 1 half times x squared. In parentheses, I've got x minus 2 raised to the third power. So I'm going to go zoom option 4. And there's what the graph looks like. So, you know, what, what I see is we're pretty close to the right thing. It does look like it comes up and, and bounces at x equals 0. Comes down and hits a low spot. It looks like that's right at um, 1 comma negative 1 half. Although the, the low spot actually looks like it's a little bit this side of that point. You know, this graph might go a little bit lower. Again, that's something that we don't know unless we know some calculus. And that's why we're calling this a sketch instead of a, you know, a good accurate graph. All right? There's also something kind of weird happening right here. Um, what, what the graph is doing is it, it turns and comes back up, but then turns and gets sideways, and then turns and goes the rest of the way. You know, so if you think of the number of turning points, there should be one less than five. So four turning points. There's one right there, there's the second one, there's the third one, there's the fourth turning point. Okay? And, and kind of like you know, that low spot being off a little bit, it's hard to know that this graph sort of levels off and then takes off again um, without doing some calculus. Okay? We just don't have enough information right now um, to, to be totally accurate with this graph. So we're, you know, we're getting started on some things, but we're going to have to finish this up next year. You know, how, how do I really get that accurate? Um, we can't talk about that now because we don't know what derivatives are or what they even mean, and, and we need that to, to, to be more accurate. All right, so if we had a graph like this, I, I would feel pretty good about the work that we did. Okay? Based on our knowledge, that's a pretty good sketch. All right? So let's try another problem. All right, so the second thing that we want to look at for today is, you know, doing a story problem or some kind of problem solving that involves polynomials, okay? So th this problem is, is on page 150 in our book. It's number 89. So I, I want for you guys to see if you can draw a picture of what this looks like and just try and answer part A. 
Find a function for the volume of this box. You guys go ahead and try that real quick. So let me, let me go ahead and do this. I'm going to draw a picture of the box, and I'll, I'll try and come up with this, uh, some function for the volume, and we'll see if we're moving down the right path here. Okay? What it says here is an open box is to be made from a square piece of material 36 inches on a side by cutting equal squares with sides of length x from the corners and turning up the sides. So what, what does that mean? Let's, let's draw a picture. I think be before we can even really move forward with this, we've got to understand what they're talking about, right? So what they're saying is we've got this square piece of material here. It's 36 inches on each side. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut away. Let's see if I can get a dotted line here. We're going to cut away sections from each corner where the length of each side of that square is x. And so once we cut it away, you know, this part will be gone, this will be gone, then I can fold this edge up, I can fold this edge up, I can fold this edge up, and this edge up. And what I get is an open box, okay? It's open on the top, there's no, no top to it, all right? So their question is, find a function for the volume of the box, okay? Well, let me, let me just move this whole picture over. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that once, once I cut away all those corners and I fold the edges up, I'm going to get a box that looks like this. Okay, It's open on top so we can see down in, inside of this. Um, so they want us to find a function for the volume of that box. All right, so we got to think back to geometry. Okay, geometry, how, how do I find volume of a box? Length times width times height, right? So volume equals length times width times height. So what is the length of this box? What is the width? What is the height? Well, we, we knew in the beginning that we had 36 inches on each side. Same thing here, 36 inches on each side. So if I want to know the length, let's just say this is the length right here of this box, um, what I need to do is I need to figure out what's, what's the expression to get from this corner to that corner. And, and where are those green dots on this picture? Right? It would be right here and right here. So, so once I cut out these corners, that edge folds up, and, and this edge right here is that face of the box. So what is the distance between those two green dots? Well, I've got 36 inches total, and I subtracted off x on this side and x on this side. So what I get here is 36 minus 2x. Right? Once these corners get cut away, and you know, we gotta realize this too. Both of these sides have to be the same. That's why we say we, we're going to cut away a square. Because when I fold those two edges up, if, if they're not the same, then they don't meet right at a corner here. You know, one face would be taller than the other face. That'd be kind of weird. Okay, so what would the length of this side of the, I guess this side right here of the box, what would that be? Well, because I've got the same 36 minus this x here minus this x, this would also be 36 minus 2x. And then what's the height of the box? Well, it should be x units, right? 
So that would be x right here. All right, so now I need to write an expression for the volume. And so what I'm going to say is the, the volume, the volume equals length times width times height. So I've got 36 minus 2x. Since I've got the same factor twice, I'll just go ahead and square that, times x. Now we, we could stop right there if we want, or some people may choose to go ahead and multiply this whole thing out. Um, that's up to you. I don't, I don't really care which one we do. So what else are they asking us? Um, it says determine the domain of the function. Now, when, when they say domain right here, that's not like going back and looking at other functions and saying, okay, denominators can't equal zero, um, whatever's inside the square root, that's got to be positive. We always want to think that. But what they really mean is, what's the domain in this particular situation? Could, could I cut out a square that has negative lengths on the sides? That doesn't make sense, does it? So we at least know that x has to be a positive number. All right? Well, how big could x get? Could I cut out squares of, of length 20? A 20 by 20 square, could I do that? You guys should be thinking right now. All right? Could I? You know, in, in your own mind, answer that question, yes or no? Well, the answer is no. Because if I went 20 units up this way and 20 this way, those two squares will overlap, and basically I've just removed the entire piece of paper. So how large of a square could I get out of here? Well, half of whatever this number is, right? This square could be as much as 18 inches by 18 inches. Although I don't really want it to be exactly 18, because then I've really just cut the piece of paper or cardboard, whatever this material is. I've cut it into four equal squares and there's nothing left to fold. Right? So, so each of these squares, um, the length of the sides have to be less than 18 inches, but greater than zero. Not greater than or equal to zero, because if I cut away zero, I just have my original piece of material. Right? So, this, this right here is part A. For part B, we're saying that our domain is x has to be somewhere between 0 and 18 inches. Now, remember, when we write a between statement like this, we always put the small number on this side, large number over here, and we only use less than signs. You would never write a statement like this where you've got a less than and a greater than sign. If you use two greater than signs, you really just wrote it backwards, switch the whole thing over, and, and x goes from one number to another. We want less than signs in there. Okay? All right, and what's the last question they ask here? Use a graphing utility to find the amount that should be cut to produce a maximum volume. The, the moment I see this word, especially because they say graphing utility, but the reason they say graphing utility instead of graphing calculator is they, the people who write the book, they don't want to assume that you have to use a calculator um, to find this, although that's what most people would do. Okay. Um, we know how to find maximums on our graphing calculator, so I really just need to graph this function I only have to look from 0 to 18, so when I set up my window, that's what I want to see. And where does the relative maximum occur? So let's, let's go to our calculator to finish this up. All right, so we got a new function here. Let's clear this one off. In parentheses, I've got 36 minus 2x, and I want to square that and then times x. Okay? If you want to use the, the caret and then a 2, that's fine, but I, I just use this for my, my exponent. And before I graph it, I'm going to set up a window. I only want to go from 0 to 18. I'll count by 2's. 
for my y value, y is going to be the volume of this box. Right? And, and there's no such thing as a negative volume. So I know I want to start at zero, uh, but the question is how big could that volume get? I don't really know. You know, I'm just going to make a guess. I'm going to punch a number in and just I'll adjust from there. Okay? I'm going to say maybe this box could have, if we started with 36, um, if I just even thought 30 times 30, that's 900 square inches times the height, which would be something like three. I mean, I could get up around 2,000, 3,000 square inches. So let's just go to 3,000, and I'll count by 500s, and then if we need to adjust, we will. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph this. All right, so I should have gone a little bit higher. Now, if I, if I would have just done zoom option four, I, I wouldn't have seen anything. I would have just seen you know, a line going straight up right here. Um, I would have, wouldn't have seen a whole lot. I, I need to think my way through the problem to develop this window and, and make sure that we're getting close. Okay. All right, so let's go and change that 3,000 to, I don't think I need to go much farther. Let's go 3,500. And we'll graph that. And there we go. We now have a complete graph. Right? I can see the entire domain. I see where it crosses the x-axis. Even though this function would go and do something down here, it doesn't fit the problem. It doesn't fit the situation. So I don't care about that. I can see the high point. That's what we're looking for. And so now I just want to figure out what that is. So second calc. We're looking for a maximum. Option four. Give it a boundary. Okay, well I know... Let's see, we're up somewhere around 6. So I'm just going to say, let's pick values between 2 and 10. Okay? 2 will be my left boundary, 10 will be my right boundary. And, and if anyone's wondering, like, how did he get those numbers? You know, I could have said 3 and 12. I could have said 0 and 18. I'm just trying to pick a, a range of values, an interval, that includes uh, this number right here. Because I know my answer is close to... 6. So that's why I'm saying let's make 2 our, our left boundary, let's make um, 8 our right boundary, give it a guess, I think it's somewhere close to 6, maybe it's exactly 6, I don't know. Well, there it is, yeah, it's exactly 6. Okay. So, so what I need to do now is I need to draw a picture of what I see on the calculator window and acknowledge my answer that I have right there. So let's go ahead and draw that. I've got this rectangle, which is our calculator window, my x-axis is right here. It went from 0 to 18. My y-axis is right here. It went from 0 to, uh, what are we going to, 3,500? You know, if you, if you want to, you can just do that in a, in a different color, maybe. There's my x and y-axis. And what did the graph look like? It went up like this, came down, kind of leveled out a little bit. And we were looking for the maximum, which is right here. And that's the point 6, comma, uh, let me go back and see, 3456. 3456, look at that. 3456. There's that point. So let me go read their question again. We'll make sure we answer it. Use a graph and utility to find the amount that should be cut to produce a maximum volume. So my answer is this. We should cut a 6 inch by 6 inch squares to achieve the maximum volume. Remember, when we do story problems, we, we want to give a, a nice, clear answer at the end. Okay? Um, you know, I, you guys, I, I look at the homework and I see some of the things you write down. Um, and if, if we look at this and we go, I don't want to write all that stuff. It's so much to write down, Mr. Judson. Do I really have to? I mean, isn't that just kind of lazy? Right? If, if we want to do a good job, we should write down 
a, a good, clear answer that makes sense. That's not that much to write, all right? All right, I think we've answered everything that they've asked. I'm just going to double check. That's always a good thing to do with story problems. Find a function for the volume of the box. We did that. It's right here. Determine the domain of the function. We did that. We can cut away anywhere from 0 to 18 inches in these squares. And then we graphed our function and found um, what it would take to achieve the maximum volume. Okay, so we're not going to have a lot of story problems for today. Uh, I think there's three. But they're all kind of like this, you know, several steps that we have to get through. Um, we've got to be able to look at, you know, what we're talking about, write a function, and, and proceed from there. Now, here, here's one thing. Um, you know, this, this kind of says something about our, our, our uh, what do I want to call it, our, our desire to learn and work at things, okay? Um, I think there's a problem that asks us to find uh, a, a function for the volume of a cylinder, or a sphere. Now, if you guys are sitting there going, I, uh, I don't remember how to do that. <laughs> well, we've got, we've got a lot of information available right at our fingertips to figure that out, right? Nobody should sit there and go, I don't remember how to find the volume of a sphere. Or I can't remember how to find the volume of, of, a, of a cylinder, right? You can grab your phone and just, you know, Google, how do you find the volume of a sphere? <laughs> Boom, it's there. Or jump on your computer and do that. You know, how do I find the volume of a cylinder? Boom, there it is. You probably would even get videos that would go back and review how to, how to do that. So, so make sure if we run across something that we can't quite remember, we're not just quitting. We're going to go and find that information. We'll find it quick, right? I don't want people thumbing through books trying to find it. Um, I think our book has a, a reference page if you have this in your hand, which we, I mean, we don't. Um, but if you did, you can go to the very front cover of the book, and right there they've got... Um, all the old geometry stuff that, that we learned. You can find it out, out that way. Okay? It's probably in our electronic book somewhere, but I, I haven't checked. I don't know exactly where it is. Um, I feel like it's probably even faster just to Google how do I find the volume of a cylinder. Okay? All right. That's what we have for today. Let me get you guys a homework assignment. All right. So, so this is one of our shorter assignments. Um, we're finishing up week 10. So this, this is... Uh, Thursday or Friday, and uh, we're on page 150, we're going to do 82 and 83. Those are going to be two problems where we have to sketch a graph using the stuff that we've learned. And then 90 through 92, those are going to be story problems, kind of like the one that we just uh, worked through. Alright, you guys, that's it. That's all we have uh, for today. Um, I'll see you guys next week. Uh, next week we will only have one video which will be on either Monday or Tuesday. Um, Wednesday's a holiday, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, I don't believe on beating up on people over, over uh, a holiday. So, you know, if you have some teachers that are giving you, you know, write a 10-page paper over Thanksgiving weekend, so well, Judson didn't do that. <laughs> I just kidding, don't say that. Um, but I, you know, I, I believe this is going to be a time for us to rest and relax and maybe for some people get a little caught up. But... Um, yeah, only one video next week. All right, you guys take care. Have a good weekend. Stay safe.